Hey everybody, welcome back to Horton's Flower Farm. If you're joining me for the first time, my name is Claudette. I own and operate a UPIC farm in Zone 7B, Long Island, New York. This video is going to be about starting a flower farm and the things that I would do different if I was starting a flower farm today. Let me tell you all a little bit about the farm that I currently have so that you can get an idea of why I would do the things different that I did. So um, my flower farm, we've been in operation for, this will be the fourth season growing, and I'm on a little less than, I probably grow on an acre, and I have two acres of land. So I am in zone 7B, I'm a U-Pick flower farm, and a U-Pick flower farm is a little bit different in the way that I go about how I plan things out and what I plant. But overall, I think the tips here that I'm gonna be giving you are tips that I would do in general, even if it wasn't a Yupik flower farm. So currently on my flower farm, I have eight 100 foot rows. I have two 200 foot rows and four 75 feet rows. And I just added a cottage garden to my farm this year. Okay, so let me get right into the first thing that I would do differently. So when I started my farm, I started off, I didn't start off with all those rows. I actually did start with less rows. And I actually would have started with even less rows than I started with. My first year I started with seven 100 foot rows. What I would do in my first year of flower farming is I think I would only start with about five to six rows of flowers. So I think what happens to us when we think about the flowers is we think that we're not gonna have enough flowers to fulfill the amount of bouquets that we wanna make. And we don't realize that how many flowers each plant is gonna give off. So we wanna plant a lot and we start off too much and we don't need to do as much work as we think we do. So it's really about planning. It's about planning what you wanna do. If you wanna only sell between 20 to 50 bouquets a week, you do not need 20 rows of flowers. You don't even need 10 rows of flowers. You could definitely do this on four to five rows of flowers. So I guess the first thing is to realize that you're gonna have a lot more flowers than you think with a small amount of space. And I've done a video on how a small amount of space, you can start a garden even in your backyard if you wanna start a small business. So that's the first thing I would do is, I would start with less rows. Starting with less rows also means that I don't have to have as much strip tape. I don't have to have as much landscape fabric. I don't have to have as much weeding. So I'm saving so much on labor, so much on time. And those are really important things that take up so much of what we do as flower farmers, those little things, and they're the biggest stressors. So I would probably start, if I was starting out, I would start with four to five rows. And now I can't talk about what you would put there because there's different um, things for flower farmers like I put all annuals my annuals bl bloom out in July through October some people like to do hardy annuals so I can't talk about what you would put there but in general I would start with smaller with less rows okay so number two is less flowers but not less flowers because of less rows less variety of flowers so my first year, you wanna try everything and you're excited to do it. But again, this is all about planning. I think that you have to really decide what's gonna give you your most bang for your buck. So I'll talk in terms of annuals, the zinnias, the, the celosia, um, the ageratum or grape filler, and, and then sunflower. So if I want to do something really simple and I tell people who ask me questions, I say I would start with cosmos, zinnias, celosia, you don't even have to do ageratum and sunflowers. And those four flowers alone can make you tons of bouquets. There is a farm by me that all they put in their bouquets is mostly sunflowers, just a hint of celosia, and they put in um, a hint of ageratum, and that's their bouquets, and they wholesale those out even to the city. Um, so theirs are very, very simple. They keep it very simple. Um, of course, I like mine a little, a little bit, you know, to put the zinnias in it and some cosmos, but you can keep it very simple and have beautiful bouquets. So I would do less flowers. Um, that way you're gonna figure out the things that work for you, the things that people like. You don't have to go crazy. And then I also think that you don't have to plant as many of one flower. So. Um, you don't have to plant if you want 50 feet of ageratum. You could do 10, 10 feet of ageratum. But again, then you're, you're adding more, more work. If you're, and then we're gonna get to the next thing. If you're growing these yourselves, 
each one of these flowers has a different start time. Okay, so for my first year, the next one is I would buy plugs if I'm doing a large scale planting. So my first year I grew 12,000 plants in my grow room and wow, was that a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. I was in that grow room every night for about 45 minutes watering, fertilizing when I had to. Um, at the beginning, some of the plants were drying out in the morning and they wanted to be watered twice a day. It was, it was a lot, they were really like babies. Um, you know, people have commented before, no, I wanna grow my own flowers. And I say, listen, if you're on a large scale like I am with my farm and you're growing like that, you don't wanna stress yourself out before the season even starts in your plants. Ordering plugs, even if it's just some of them, is gonna take the burden off of you. So the year that I ordered plugs, which was last year, my first year ordering plugs, I ordered 75% of what I grew in plugs and it made a huge difference. I felt like I wasn't burnt out by the time those plugs went in the ground because honestly, even just getting those plugs and having to harden them off was a lot of work. Those two weeks and or week before you get the plugs and bring them in and out and making sure they stay alive is a lot of work. So you just wanna try and make less work for yourself. This is not being lazy, by the way. You're allowed to take things off of your plate and not be called lazy and you're not doing what you love and growing it. So I really would recommend buying even some plugs. Okay, so my next, my next tip of what I would do if I was starting a flower farm today is I bought my plugs and you'll see it, my disaster video of my unboxing. They came in the mail and a lot of them were destroyed. So I would recommend getting a grower who is local to you and even having some of them grown locally because this is gonna save you the stress of worrying that everything for your whole season is gonna be destroyed because the box got lost in UPS or it got crushed. Because let me tell you that the growers are great but they don't it, you know, they don't have control over shipments and they don't have control. Once, once those plugs are delivered and I had this problem, I said, can you send me a new tray? They don't have backups. So this is something that you don't want to have to worry about. So I would definitely try and grow locally. So the next thing that I would recommend if I was starting this year is to really plan out succession plantings. If you don't know what succession planting is, you really have to learn what it is. I'm not gonna go into it too much. I will be doing a video on succession planting, but succession planting is planting, for example, zinnias. And this is important to me to succession plant because what happens is once they go in in May, they start to look a little, you know, dying back in September and then they die even more at the end of September. And I want them to go all the way through October and they don't look so pretty then. And because I'm a you pick farm, I want them to look really pretty for the customers. So I need to do three succession plantings, not even just one, three succession plantings in July and even the beginning of August, which may sound late, but it's not if you want those blooms to go all the way through. So I suggest that you really look into succession planting, how it works to keep your season going so that you'll have blooms and you can make more money and be more profitable. Okay, so the next thing that I would do is I would get help right away on the farm no matter what the cost it is, even if I'm taking a hit. So you may think like, I don't have money for that, but you are going to be doing so much work, your flowers are going to fall behind in, in, in every aspect. Like, this year I, I hired someone to do the weeding and I probably that's what I'd say if I were to recommend where to spend the money I'd say hire somebody to weed and you're going to say but use landscape fabric. I do use landscape fabric and the weeds we have really high weed pressure where I am. So, so I hired somebody to weed I actually hired two people to weed and it was somebody who was familiar with flowers um, because they because they work on a farm also. So they were able to decipher which ones were weeds and which one were flowers. Um, so I actually had them weed um, in the beginning of July and it cost me a lot of money, around seven to $800 for my whole um, farm to be weeded. And it was the best seven to $800 I spent because it kept it looking pristine and weed free probably all the way into it kept it looking beautiful. So it was money well spent because it's not even about how it looks. It is for me because I'm a you pick flower farm, but it's also about the nutrients that the flower is gonna get. And I learned that from the past two years that I grew where things were growing smaller and didn't look as healthy just because the weed pressure was so much on the farm that 
weeding was not just about it looking pretty because there was no weeds. It really is beneficial to the plants. And if I were to do that myself, like they spent, um, I think they said it was 16 hours of weeding, which is a lot of weeding in the hot summer. Um, so that saved me 16, maybe 18 hours. It was, it was a lot. So, and they got it done very quickly and it was, it was awesome. So I would hire help. Um, for weeding, I would hire help for even just if you're having somebody cut the cut the flowers to arrange. I don't like cutting flowers to arrange. I think it's so tedious and taking time. And you know what? You know what it is. I do like cutting flowers to arrange. The problem is when you're running a farm, you have so many things to do that the things that you really like to do it becomes a chore so now i don't like to do it anymore and for me harvesting flowers is not fun even somebody helping to arrange the bouquets that you're selling if you want to pay someone to do that and save you that time and stress what i would do is hire help for whatever it is that is stressing you out and definitely spend the money you know it's money well spent that you're not going to burn out by the end of the season the next thing that i would do in my first year of any business is marketing so marketing is very very important and you may think like the people will come <laughs> but they're not going to <laughs> i'm just kidding but it's it's going to be hard if you're not spending time on marketing and thinking about how you're going to get your product out there and the different channels um social media but just businesses you know reaching out it's you know word of mouth is nice but it's word of mouth is not going to get you the full way that you need to be so I'm not going to go into the details of marketing. I'm just going to tell you that it's super important. The first year that I opened up the business, I didn't do a lot of marketing. Um, I, I probably marketed, I used influencers to market it. I didn't really spend a lot on marketing and it didn't have the turnout that I thought it was going to have. Um, the second year, we spent a lot more on marketing. We got our name out there. People know about us. Um, we were on the news and that was not a paid marketing. That was just luck. Um, if you can get on the news, that's great. But, you know, spending the money on marketing, maybe on Facebook and things like that, I think is a great investment. I think even spending just a little bit, like if you, again, it's like, like I said before, with paying someone to weed, it's money well invested, even if it's just a couple hundred dollars. So I would, you know, look into that, but marketing that's free too, just trading people flowers to put the, your cards into their businesses and things like that that are free. Anything that you can do for marketing is going to be beneficial and I would do it the first year. I would think about that before the flowers are even in the ground. Okay guys, so I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that it was helpful in the things that I would have done differently on my farm had I been starting my flower farm right now. Uh, if you have any questions, you can you know, comment below and I'll be happy to look at them and answer them. And I wish you guys all luck. Flower farming is a beautiful, creative thing. And I think it's something that is, you have to have a real passion for and love. And I think it brings joy to so many people and yourself. So I wish you all luck and I will see you guys soon.